Hello viewers, Super GT here. Apparently, it's Momo's time. And I'll be completely honest, that's the first thing I thought when I saw this combination, the Mazda Rosa Touring Car around Tokyo. I just knew that this was a recipe for death. But we're about to find out whether or not that transpired to be the case. Now, 12 opponents or 11 opponents don't really include yourself or maybe you do include yourself maybe you do fight against yourself in many ways but um, the main problem here well, I suppose the 12th opponent is the barrier but also this hideous chicane as um, this guy goes for a little trip into the barrier already casual one second penalty okay we'll have to serve it now the frustrating thing about this is probably one of the worst penalty lines as the guys ahead just sail off into the distance there's nothing you can do once you serve a penalty at this track it's game over but let me welcome you to exhibit a the absolute hideous chicane here at tokyo this thing is a widow maker i think is the best way to summarize it but it requires a ton of fortune to really get it dead right and we'll go through that a little bit more later on in the race or in the video, should I say. But um, that chicane is... Well, to borrow a quote, the designer of it should be taken into a dark room and shot, I think, is is the, the best way to summarise it. Now, coming through here again, you see it just clattering over, over those, over those big, meaty curbs. The car really doesn't respond too well to it if you really abuse it too hard. Now, going up the back straight here, looking for this position. So I did manage to just stay in the toe of the cars ahead, but it wasn't enough. You can see it almost, actually, there's a bit of a lag spike there. Uh, couldn't quite get our sixth place. And um, you can see there, half the, half the grid losing SR. I knew that this was going to be an SR killer, and uh, that seems to be the case. Now, let's go and have a look and do some studying, shall we? TRL Adam. Let's see what we got to do. This is the number one time in EMEA. In Europe, Middle East and Africa, if you didn't know what that meant. Now, revving out the gears quite a lot. That's the first thing I'm noticing here. And uh, shifting up quite late. Nice and fluid through that first sweeping section into the hairpin then. This is a hot point for trouble, along with the chicane. Down into first gear momentarily, coming out of there quite nicely. And through here, revving out in fourth, don't bother with fifth gear. Um, I'm sure that Greta Thunberg is not too happy about that. Revving the crap out of the car and destroying the planet in the process. But if there's a tenth to be saved, then screw the planet. Right, into the, into the chicane then. Just, just look at this. This is a crime against motorsport. An absolute crime against, against motorsport right there. And uh, we can pause it at this horrific moment, uh, momentarily. Uh, I mean, just look at this. I mean, f to be fair to Adam, he's a really fast player and he's an absolute beast on this game. It's not his fault that the track limits are just stupid. But there you go. <laughs> it's actually just quite hilarious looking at it. You can pretty much, as long as you've got two wheels on the orange or yellowy curb, then you're all right. But it just takes luck in some ways. Obviously, you've got got to be a good player to really nail it consistently but my god that chicane is uh, it's not my favorite place in the world it really isn't one of my least favorite places we're going to go again and see if we can uh, make our way through the pack i should probably qualify better i'll do that for the next race but um, this, this race usually is characterized by slipstream and penalties but um, because we're at the back, we're going to have to make the most of the slipstream and hopefully not get any penalties. But we'll see if that's going to be the case then. We've already gone up a couple of positions here as we sweep through this first section and come down towards the hairpin. So this is where things really begin to take centre stage. This is where trouble begins to uh, make itself, make its presence known as we come in then on the brakes. And it's going to be me. And I go flying into the Spaniards who wipes out the German as a result. And that is 100% certified R4M content right there. 
Super GT with the double kill. Double kill. And just waiting for the penalty. Probably a five second, probably a ten. No, nothing. Yes, you guessed it. Perfectly clean move that, apparently, according to the game. So I'm actually a really clean driver. That was actually totally encouraged in the game to do that because there was no penalty. Therefore, it's clean. And then here, you get a tiny tap from the rear and end up going into the wall and you get a five second. So for murdering two people, nothing. For going into the wall, five. You, you tell me how that one works. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we lost loads of time. There was not much chance of anything happening in this race. So I felt like the best decision was to jump into qualifying and try to improve our time because I only had a, a 59.7 at this point, as you can see on the right hand side there. Now the key thing, of course, as we said, the key to success around this circuit is nailing this goddamn chicane. So let's try and do it. So first, first up, you see, I mean, clattering it quite a lot, but still really not anywhere near what TRL Adam was doing. It's almost like in my instinct to not do it too much. But um, you see that we get the penalty on the exit. Try again. Can we, can we cut it a little bit more? No, pretty much exactly the same. At least I'm consistent, I suppose, but consistently slow. We'll try again on the second lap. Well, this is the third lap now. You see a little bit more clattering going on. And then if you carry the speed through, you really gain a lot through the final corner. And again, going through there quite nicely. We've improved to a 58.6 at this point. Come around the final corner. It's going to be a low 58 on this occasion. And it's going to be 58.0. So getting better every lap. You see that there. Improving slowly but surely. We'll try again on the next lap. Clattering over the, the, the first curb more. And we get a really good exit. And gain. We're going to gain a few tenths through this final corner. And on the main straight. And um, it really proves on this game that exit speed is so important. Once you get the exit speed, you gain so much time at the next straight. You see that I've gained a quarter of a second by the time I get to the finish line. And uh, we set a 57.8. I misbreak, miscalculate the breaking point there and we go into the pit lane. But let's whip it forward then to the next uh, race here. And uh, we're going to be starting hopefully a bit further forward. Yes, we are. Look at that. Second on the grid. The guy in the lead, six tenths quicker, or just over half a second quicker. And my strategy in this situation is normally to be aggressive and, and try to get to the lead as quickly as possible, control the race from the front. And that, my friends, is exactly what I'm going to do with probably the most savage lunge in this millennium. In fact, I'd say. So the space just opens up on the right hand side, and there's only one thing in my mind here, and that is to go full send up the inside. He wasn't having any of it, he was turning in anyway, but I'm not having any of it either, and I'm going up the inside. I am having the lead, mate. So up into first place we go. I only have 2.9 laps left of the race to go, with which to try to bring this one home for the Mazda boys back at the Mazda factory. Okay, so coming down the hill then, down towards the hairpin. Am I close enough to get Shadow Realmed? I don't think so. Well, actually I do think so, but hopefully I can just, just get away with it. You see him poking into the screen on the radar, but it isn't quite enough. I keep the position. Now I've got a decent margin here. You see that 0.7 seconds, three quarters of a second pretty much. But, of course, with the slipstream, nothing you can do. They are going to gain back on me. And uh, this is a long flat out section, a good 20 seconds at least of flat out, flat out miss. Well, probably more than that, probably about 30 seconds. And you can see him here on the radar. Therefore, I'm going to go to the right hand side, go defensive, put him to the outside, and then up to the sweeping right hander. I'm going to just keep the inside. And down towards the chicane for the first time. Can we make sure we get through here without meeting the Grim Reaper? Yes, we can, almost. Is that going to be a penalty on the exit? You just run four wheels beyond that kerb, and you do get half a second. And you normally find out here, but we haven't. We've just escaped. I was within a pixel of trouble, but we keep it in, and we continue. That's one lap down, two to go. And uh, the game plan is working, but he is coming back at me here, and I 
don't have much help from the guys behind. It would be great if the guy in third could start attacking the guy in second here, but that isn't quite the case. They're going a little bit deep there into the wall. No penalty, not quite hard enough for contact. Alas, we continue. Wait, that's the incorrect use. I've, I've made that mistake before, but we continue anyway. And again, into the wall. Silly mistake, but I think the guy behind did the same. And now, the Danish driver, out of nowhere, comes through on the outside now, into the hairpin. Can he do me around the outside? I don't think he can. I've got the, I've got the inside. Force him the wrong way, the long way around. And keep the lead, although it's hotting up now. So three of us in this battle for the lead. There was a Spaniard there in fourth, but I think he's got a penalty. So he's going to drop down a little bit further. I'm not sure which side to defend is. I'm going to go to the left. Um, but it's really quite tough to decide. I suppose you want the right as the next corner. The next big corner is a right-hander, but there you go. I think it's almost impossible to defend sometimes anyway. As uh, the Danish driver goes through into the lead. And the Polish driver comes through as well. And uh, I'm going to go down to third. Um, so no panics just yet. Obviously, we don't want to lose too many positions, but it's always it's, there's always a chance of something going wrong later. Forcing me into the wall. Thank you very much for that. Coming down into the chicane then. And um, oh, was that a big cut? Very wide. And we're going to go back up the inside on the exit with a poor run from the Polish driver, retaking second. Now. Oh, actually, we've got ourselves a half a second penalty. Quite unusual. I suppose we must have just run a tiny bit wide. And uh, the driver behind getting a one second. And therefore, my strategy now is to go very, very attacking. I'm going to have to just absolutely send this guy, lunge him, get into the lead, and then serve this half a second penalty and hope that I can somehow stay ahead. But it's very unlikely. We'll see what we can do, though. So through this uh, fast sweeping left, right, left complex just going to tuck into the toe and then of course we'll have to wait for the hairpin down the hill there to see if a proper overtaking opportunity will present itself is he going to open up the inside yes he is just about we're going to slam it up the inside he's not going to move too far to the left well we have got the position up the inside we go and we are into the lead but again we have this half a second penalty to serve which is going to scupper our plans big time. And um, we saw it in the previous couple of races. It really kills your momentum. It really kills you. And uh, there we go. Half a second served. Tuck back into the slipstream as quickly as possible. But it just takes so long to get back on terms with the car ahead. Especially if you're in the same car. As uh, we come through this tunnel then. Um, and he's actually nearly got a second in hand over me at this point. And now the Spaniard, who looked like he was out of the race, is coming back at me here. And he's on my left-hand side. I just have to check out where he is. I'm going to go up the inside, keep the position. A bit of a push on the exit. I would just keep the car from the wall. He's very close. The pressure is on through the chicane for the final time. I have to get it dead right. The lead are very wide. Beyond the, beyond the curve, easily. So is he going to get a penalty for that? We could still pick up the win here if that's going to be the case. But I don't think it is. Very strange. I don't understand the track limits, I think. It looked like he went way beyond the curb on the exit. But it isn't a penalty. We're going to be in second position as we cross the line. So after all that, we finished exactly where we started. It's a bit of an interesting one, that, for sure. But we're going to move ahead and try to go one better in this race starting fourth this time a little bit further back so a fair few people here with some very decent laps and um, we're only good enough for fourth so i do need to go back into the qualifying and absolutely launch the crap out of the chicane a bit better so here we go then away from the line another three laps begins is the polish driver going to be upset with my mega lunge at turn one in the previous race i think so and therefore I'm going to make sure I hold him narrow here because he's definitely going to be aware of my presence try it around the outside is it going to work? not quite always worth a try though always worth a try but we're going to have to slot into fourth and just wait for our opportunity to present itself 
Right, through the left. Polish driver into the wall, slows down. I'm going to go into the gap, just about. Tiny bit of contact on the way through. Up into third. And then down towards the hairpin then. And as we go into the corner, the Polish driver is going to do a super GT and wipe out two of his opponents and move up into second. Casual little flick of the uh, indicators there, the hazard lights. And he's up into second. And I'm in third still. So there you go. Race not over though. Don't ever think it's over. It's never over until it's actually over. There's a fact for you. Just remember that. As you come up the back straight. And uh, MNT Catfish in the lead. Vulnerable to the slipstream here. We see how much of a momentum boost we have got. Still revving out fourth gear like an absolute maniac. Greta Thunberg looking on in the stands in absolute disgust. Catfish up the inside, not quite. Hobo around the outside. We're going to go three abreast coming out of the corner. And you just know that I'm not backing out in this situation. As we come down into the chicane for the first time in this race, it's going to get messy. Hobo's into the wall. The Polish driver gets absolutely murdered. And he's going to go flying off stage right into the barrier. He's going to say goodbye. He no longer wants part of this race. RIP in pieces. One second penalty though. There you go. So end up killing your opponent. One second penalty. I'll, I'll quite happily take that. You know, if I could just kill all 11 of my opponents and have an 11 seconds penalty, then um, that's one way to win the race. One way to get success in Gran Turismo Sport. There you go. Uh, in the lead, but with this one second penalty, I mean, the penalties just do not add up. I've, I've got no penalty for blatantly murdering two people at the hairpin. A five second for hitting the wall when I was almost kind of hit into the wall. And then a one second for that thing there. You tell me. You tell me how that how that works out. I don't know. As we come down towards the, the hairpin. Second time of three. Is Catfish going to go for the move? I think he is. I don't want to fight it too much because I've got this penalty to serve. So there's no point in fighting too much. He's up the inside though. And he's, oh, there's a bit of contact. A little bit wide. As we come out of the come out of the hairpin and the pack is really close you're going to see how, how just how much time you lose here just how much momentum just how much of a, me a momentum killer this penalty zone is it's one of the worst penalty zones in the game i think it's really really bad it really does you do get penalized let's put it that way and uh, you see it. i'm going to tuck into the slipstream but still it's not enough just continuously lose momentum you just lose momentum for the entire straight and you just cannot regain it and we move all the way down into seventh from the lead with a one second penalty and um, that usually is the case in race a it's usually a very close race in slower cars and therefore the pack is usually quite bunched so any penalty you have to serve is usually pretty catastrophic for your hopes for your hopes and dreams now coming down into the chicane just um Note the spaniel on the left-hand side backs out there. Probably the wise decision. You really do not want to be going side by side through the chicane of death. And this is probably the true chicane of death, or the, sh the chicane of, of mixed fortune. I think is what it should be known as. Um, the chicane of death at Dragon Trail truly does produce death, many many deaths. But this one, it often produces death, but it seems to it seems to be one of those chicanes that presides itself on some sort of fortune system and sometimes if you get get the rub of the green then you can get some good luck through there and put out some good moves so it's just a it's just a very strange place is that chicane here and uh, we've got three abreast here couldn't quite go for the inside didn't quite um an opportunity didn't quite present itself they're three abreast up ahead something is surely going to end in a bad way here. Spaniard gets pinned against the wall. There's bad blood in this race for sure. Just come into the hairpin. Slight tap was there. Slight bit of contact with the Spaniard. But we get out of the corner okay. We're going to tuck back in. We're in sixth place at this point on the third and final lap. Do I want to finish in sixth place? I, I hope to go one better. Are the days of me finishing sixth place done and dusted? I hope so. I'd like, I'd like to at least move up into fifth and graduate to a better position, but um, I think the, the stars will align once again and I'll have to 
finish in my natural position. But let's not forget the chicane. Drinking game for the word chicane. If you want to go back and start this video again, as uh, you were paralytic by the fifth minute of this video, I think, when I played it. Now, Spaniard, a little bit wide, presents itself an opportunity here. We're going to go in side by side. This is asking for trouble. It really is. And as we go in, hitting the apex nicely, Spaniard, yeah, just completely disappears into the realm. And the, the portal itself opened up and he got completely swallowed. And he has disappeared into another dimension. As we come out in fifth, but there is a one second penalty up ahead. And therefore we're going to move up into fourth. So back to where we started again. So eventful races these for sure. And it, it seems to be one where you move up, you move down. And then you move move it all around and you end up back where you started. Good stuff. But um, that is going to bring this video to a close. I do hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on the chicane of mixed fortune. As always everyone, and take, take care. And thank you very much for making it this far into the video. But yeah, take care. And I shall see you all in a video very soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.